everyone. Welcome back to Faith and Flower. If you're new here, my name is Robin. In today's video, I've got some laundry and cleaning motivation and a really easy recipe for one of our family's favorite desserts. So make sure you watch till the end of the video for that. So if you are in need of some homemaking inspiration, today's video is for you. In my weekly cleaning routine, I like to get laundry out of the way at the beginning of the week. And so this is the day that I get all of our clothes washed. So that comes out to be usually around four loads of laundry. I not only like getting laundry out of the way, but I also feel that it's really economical to have the dryer going right after the washing machine. And while it's still hot, getting the next load in, I usually get a lot of other things done at home on this day. And I also like the excuse that it gives me to sit down and relax while I fold. I mentioned in a previous video that we discontinued the streaming services that we had been using, and one of the main reasons was that the content wasn't very family friendly. Several of you suggested in the comments that we give Pure Flix a try, so I am so excited that I'm partnering with them for today's video. If you are looking for God-honored media that strengthens your faith and values, is wholesome and suitable for the entire family, and can be streamed seamlessly on any device, you might want to check out Pure Flix. Over the weekend, we watched War Room, and that is one of my all-time favorite movies. And we've also really enjoyed the series called The Chosen. Click the link in the description box to try Pure Flix for free for seven days. Thank you Pure Flix for sponsoring today's video. In addition to laundry, I wanted to give our kitchen floors a deep clean. <laughs> they could really use it. We have a dog and with the summer weather, we're in and out a lot more. Plus just, you know, kitchen spills and things like that, even though you clean them up, there always tend to be some sticky areas around the stove and the kitchen sink. So I decided to go all out, remove everything from the floor and really get these floors clean today. Before mopping, I wanted to give the floor a quick vacuum to make sure I get up any loose dirt and dust. I also need to dust the pedestal underneath our table and the baseboards. Those are areas that I don't always do every week and they could really use it. Austin just got back from his walk and it is so hot outside today. He loves to take advantage of laying on the cool tiles, but he's not too tired to do a little vacuum chasing. It has been a little while since I included some Austin antics, so I hope you Austin fans enjoyed it. This is one of the reasons why the kitchen floor needs a deep clean. <laughs> we have had several dogs and Austin is by far the messiest drinker we have had so far. Today I am putting my new steam mop to the test. <laughs> so I just recently bought this on Amazon. I checked out some reviews and this was the top pick for a lot of people. So I went with this one, it's made by Bissell and I put it in my Amazon store in case you guys are in the market for one too. 
For years, I had a steam mop that was made by Shark, and I loved that. But when it broke, I bought my e-cloth mop, which you guys have seen me use in lots of videos, and I love that one too. We have a lot of floor space, and so I need one that has the onboard water attachment, and I think they have discontinued that. I tried to see if they were going to get more in, and they have been out of them for a very long time, and mine's actually leaking a little bit, so I'm not able to replace it. So I decided to go back to the steam mop. Steam mops are great for really getting down and getting up the dirt, especially out of grout and areas like that. And I like that this one has a pad that has the microband technology. So that takes care of any bacteria on our floor. And with a dog, that's something I'm concerned about. I also like this one because it has three different settings. So that means I can put it on a lower setting and it'll be safe for our hardwood floors too. I feel like our hardwood floors aren't quite as dirty as the kitchen floor, but I want to clean those today too because they tend to show a lot of dirt. So they show Austin's shedding fur and any sort of smears or paw prints on the floor. So I'm going to vacuum those quickly too. I actually had the Roomba run in here earlier today, so I think all of the carpets are good enough and I'm just going to focus on the hardwoods. When I went to remove the pad from the mop to put on a new one for the hardwood floors, I was really shocked at just how dirty our kitchen floor was. Here you can see it in comparison to a clean one. The one that's dirty actually has some little scrubber stripes and the other one is good for the hardwood floors. And so it comes with both of these. So I put on a fresh one to go at the hardwood floors and we'll see just how dirty they are. So side by side, you can see my suspicion was correct. Our kitchen floor is far dirtier than the hardwood floors, but it needed cleaning too. And I'm going to toss both of these in the washing machine while I'm doing laundry today and get them all clean and ready to go for the next time. In my weekly cleaning routine video, which I will have linked down in the description box, I talk about my laundry routine. And so I really like to hang as many of our shirts as possible because I feel like it's great for the environment and for reduced energy use. And our shirts come out so much better when I do this. An added bonus is that I have less to fold. So I just hang the shirts in here and once they're dry, I take them right on their hanger to hang in our closets. And the only shirts I have to fold are Patrick's work shirts and some workout wear and maybe undershirts.
have a damp dry setting on our dryer, which really helps me out, or if I just wait about 10 minutes after I start the dryer, I can pause it and then remove all of the shirts that I wanna hang, put everything back in the dryer, and let it continue. Once laundry was complete for the day, I was really happy to see that the mop pads came out almost good as new and ready for the next session of mopping. Now for the dessert I promised you. It's a fruit crisp or sort of a cobbler, and you can use any type of fruit that you like, but today I'm using peaches, which is my favorite. I like to remove the skin from the peaches, but I don't wanna waste any of the flesh, so this is a great way to do that. You make a little X in the bottom of the peach, and then you add boiling water to the peaches in a bowl and let them sit for a few minutes. And so while the peaches are sort of soaking in that hot water, I will make the batter or sort of the base for this dessert. I will have the full recipe down in the description box so you can cut, paste, and print if you like. I'm using gluten-free Bisquick for this, but if you don't need to be gluten-free, you can use regular Bisquick. Combine some melted butter along with the Bisquick, some sugar, a little salt, milk, and an egg. Whisk it together until it's well incorporated. Pour the mixture into a greased baking pan and set the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit. By now, the peaches should be ready to peel. Take it from me, use some tongs because the water is still quite hot, but you'll be amazed at how the skins just slip right off of the peaches. If they're really hot, you might want to set them out and let them cool just a little bit, or if you have tough hands like me, you can get right in there. Then I just slice up the peaches. They don't have to be perfect at all because they're actually not even really going to show. Arrange the fruit evenly all over the top of the base and then bake for about 50 to 60 minutes or until it's nice and golden. And I said earlier, you can use any fruit for this. I love peaches, but blackberries or blueberries, even strawberries are amazing in this. I think just about any fruit that you love would be great in this recipe. So after dinner, I served it up with a nice scoop of vanilla ice cream. The cobbler is still warm and the ice cream is all melty and delicious. We enjoyed this so much and I hope that you'll give it a try and that your family loves it too. Thanks so much for spending time with me here today. I hope you walked away with a little bit of everyday homemaking inspiration for your week. I look forward to talking with you in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a great week.